Hey guys, I'm Rich from NeoWin, and today we're unboxing the new Dell XPS 13 2 in 1. Okay, so I'm pumped for this. I say that a lot in videos, but I really am because this has Intel's 10th generation Ice Lake processors. And if you're not familiar with Ice Lake, it's Intel's first 10 nanometer generation. Intel has been stuck on 14 nanometers for a long time now. They were supposed to deliver this um, 2016? It's been a while. It kept getting delayed. It kept getting pushed back. And, um, you know, now it's finally here. They actually had one 10 nanometer chip without integrated graphics in the 8th gen. And I think it was only sold in like one laptop in China or something. You know, um, so now it's finally here. And... It's more confusing than that, though. <laughs> um, the Intel's 10th generation core processors are not just Ice Lake. There's also Comet Lake, which is still 14 nanometers. Now, um, the big benefit to Comet Lake over the 8th gen is that there's now a hexa-core SKU of the Core i7 U series, which is great. Um, if, you get an, if you get a new Dell XPS 13, which is out now, um, that's Comet Lake. If you get an XPS 13 2-in-1, that's Ice Lake. Okay, so we have 10 nanometer and 14 nanometer. Also, Comet Lake comes with regular integrated um, Intel UHD graphics, and Ice Lake comes with Iris Plus graphics, depending on the processor SKU that you choose. Now, that's also complicated. <laughs> and I, I think that Intel named these things in a very complicated way, just kind of to throw us off the scent that Truthfully, Comet Lake exists because there's a shortage on 10 nanometer processors, which I've been told by numerous OEMs that that's why. But if you, here's how you can tell by looking at a spec sheet. Comet Lake, the 14 nanometer one, has the same SKU number types as 8th gen and previous gens, which is like uh, Whiskey Lake, you'd get like a Core i7 8565U or an 8665U. Right, so now you'll see uh, 10 something 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 U. Same thing, Y series, 10 something 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 Y. Now, Ice Lake ditches U and Y entirely. And now it's just G1, G4, G7, All right? So this is gonna be a Core i7, right? Look at, make sure I get it right, 1065 G7. Now the G number is corresponding to the level of graphics in the processor. Now, G1 is still Intel UHD graphics and regular integrated graphics. G4 and G7 are Iris Plus. Okay, following me? <laughs> like, you're going to see some devices like this one, actually. I'm looking at the spec sheet. We got, there's the Core i3 1005 G1 and the Core i5 1035 G1. So they're opting not to use the, the Core i5 G4, which actually has the, the Iris Plus graphics. So regarding which one is better, I'm not sure. <laughs> I'm, honestly, because I haven't used one. That's why I'm pumped about this. I haven't used any 10th gen PCs yet. So um, you're seeing Comet Lake in a lot of flagship products like the XPS 13. Lenovo's got new Think ThinkPad X1 Carbon and Yoga models out there. Um, and so, so you would think, I mean, because the, the XPS 13 has always been more powerful than the XPS 13 2-in-1. Otherwise, what would be the point of the regular XPS 13? The clamshell is more powerful. Otherwise, you're, you're getting more functionality out of the 2-in-1. So why, why wouldn't you just get the 2-in-1 if all things are equal? Dell has traditionally used a Y-series processor in the XPS 13 2-in-1. So there's a big difference here. And like I said, there's no U or Y in the in the Ice Lake names. Although there are U and Y series chips, they just don't call it that anymore. So like this is 1065 G7. It ends with a five, that means it's U series. If it ended with a zero, that would mean it's Y series. Now, Y series with uh, the previous generation was five watts in the eighth gen. It was 4.5 watts in seventh gen. It used to be called Core M. It was, was M3, M5, and M7. Uh, then they rebranded the M5 and an M7, I5 and I7, and now it's just all Core I. But, yeah, so now um, there's different wattages for Y series. It's much more powerful now, but this is actually the U series Ice Lake Core I7 that's in this one. So it's a huge upgrade in terms of performance. All right, so let's get this open. Interestingly, this box was not taped up. This is the only box it came in. 
Usually if you see me um, opening a box that's already not, you know, where the tape is already broken, the the it came in a bigger box. <laughs> you know, and and that's comes often like that, but not today, no. No. So it comes in white, or this is the model that they sent me, it was white. And we're gonna get this out. There's another box inside, and this is Dell's thing. I, I always find their packaging just a little weird. It's it's one of those things where it's like like if you buy this machine, you're gonna get this box, and then you're gonna get this box inside of it. Now, that wouldn't be uncommon if everything was in this box, but it's not. There's actually more stuff in here. Like you're gonna find the charger. Should be a USB type C charger. All right, let's see, was it 45 watts? That's the cable. We got a white cable, which is cool with a white laptop. Give them some props there. A USB type C to type A adapter, which is, I guess, nice of them to include. I feel like it shouldn't be necessary. Like if you gotta include an adapter in the box, uh, then you're taking something out of the product that probably should still be in there. But I don't think the XPS 13 2-in-1 has ever had USB type A. It's always been a very thin and light device. Okay, yes, this is a 45 watt USB type C charger. So I'll take that. Normally I don't even take chargers out of the box like this is gonna stay in the box. Um, because I have so many USB type C chargers and then when it comes time to send this stuff back, the charger's already in there. <laughs> I don't have to go look for it, make sure I'm sending back the right one that came with the unit. But it's white and it's pretty and it's gonna go with the, the device. So let's get this open. There's a, oh. That's for the laptop itself. So yeah, see like I said, the laptop itself gets its own box, which is just kind of weird to me. And all of Dell's devices are like that. That's just how it is. And let's just peel this stuff off. And let's get out the XPS 13 2-in-1 with a Core i7 1065G7. What's in here? All right. Some quick start guides. I have no interest in any of this stuff. So full disclosure, I have used this product when they announced it. They they Dell often has these these little uh, briefings where where they'll show off the products they're going to announce. Let journalists journalists have a little bit of time with the product so they understand what they're writing about before they announce it. Um, and it, it helps for context when you when we're writing about a new product. Otherwise, like we're writing in the middle of a live stream. And uh, we don't get the full story of what's going on. So there's a couple really cool things that I want to point out. One is the keyboard. Okay. Um, you can see very shallow keyboard. And that's obviously to save space. Now, this is called maglev. And basically, they're using maglev, m magnets to push up the keys. Now, it's not the first time that they've used... A maglev keyboard. This is the second generation maglev keyboard. The first was actually on the Dell XPS 15 2-in-1 and I did not like it. Okay, <laughs> the XPS 15 2-in-1, the keyboard was, it, it was shallow, it felt shallow, the keys felt a little bit wobbly and um, I didn't like it. it. It was easy to get used to after a certain amount of time using it, but you know, then you'd go to your regular desktop PC and you go back, you gotta get used to it all over again. This feels like a, a real keyboard. It It's, I like it, I, like I said, I've used it. I, I spent a little bit of time with it during my, my hands-on time and it was good. So, what else we got here? We got the, the carbon fiber weave, which is new in, um, in Dell's laptops. It should, well, it's fairly new. It should be easier to clean. It should be, you know, it's pretty, I can tell you that. I love the, the white interior, the frost exterior. Um, they just called it white, actually, now that I think of it, and they, they used to call this color frost. But um, yeah, and then of course we have extremely narrow bezels all around, and we have the webcam on top. That's actually new with this model. I think sometimes I forget to point that out, but, <laughs> but um, yeah, I think I forget to point that out because like last year's XPS 13 was the first one to actually put that webcam up there. And, um, you know, and then the XPS 15, and now it's just happening in all XPS models and like it doesn't feel new anymore. Okay, so a um, couple more things. We can see uh, Windows is not activated, which is just weird. Um, we're going to connect to Wi-Fi, see if that changes. 
Okay, well, we're connected to Wi-Fi, and, and it's still not activated. We're not going to play with that too much, though. What we're going to do is we're going to look in settings. And this should be 16 gigs of RAM, and um, should be a 1080p plus, which, yeah. Um, so it is 16 by 10, which is cool. Uh, the display is a little bit taller, which means that if you put it into um, portrait mode, it's going to look a little better than a 16 by 9 display would. If we go in here, we will see 1065 G7. Yeah, and 16 gigs of RAM. So, um, yeah, it's got the good stuff here. Um, I believe it's 512 storage. They did tell me some specs. I don't always, so just wanted to put that out there. Uh, yeah, so it's going to be 512 total. Check which version of Windows it is. All right, yeah, 1903, um, which is pretty standard at this point. All right, so, ooh, we got some Dell updates to install. And that's something, by the way, we have some Dell software here. Uh, it's actually support assist that, that you, you can find those driver updates, but there's also Dell Mobile Connect, which is a phenomenal product, which is, um, it allows you to send and receive texts uh, from your phone. It even works with iPhones, which Microsoft, your phone does not Okay, so, so there's a lot of good stuff there. Uh, you can mirror your Android phone, but um, the one thing that I really do like about it is that you can easily send and receive text messages. And it also works with uh, non-Dell products, which is great. Uh, so let's just take a look. Like I said, it looks good in portrait mode. You can just fold the display back like so, and then use it like this. And it, it, if this There it goes. Yeah, so yeah, it looks good. You know, um, over here we have a Thunderbolt 3 port and a micro SD slot for expandable storage. And then, see the bottom here? Oh, they got rid of the flap, by the way. You used to have this flap there where you could flip it up and, and it would tell you the serial number, service number, stuff like that. Okay, over here we have another uh, Thunderbolt 3 port and a 3.5 millimeter combo audio jack. And you can see you have the, the machined aluminum edges here, and it's a really nice design. I like it a lot. I'm a big fan of the XPS uh, lineup. I think uh, pretty much everybody is. Yeah, I don't know of any product reviewers where if you mention the XPS lineup, they're just like, uh, you know, as, you know. Um, a lot of companies are doing really good things. You know, um, I love Lenovo's ThinkPads. I love HP's Elite Books. I love their Spectres too. Um, a lot of the business PCs are really good, but when it comes to consumers, um, you know, the, the XPS lineup just, it kind of kills it. And, you know, that 13-inch that convertible, like, I feel like this is the winner. I've never cared for the XPS 13 two-in-one lineup because I would never, I would never, <laughs> seriously, I would never tell you to spend $1,500 on a PC with a Y-series processor. It doesn't get the job done. It's, it's, it's fine for, for productivity. You know, if you do your web on, if you do your work on the web through a browser, uh, Microsoft Office, stuff like that. But it's like, you know, you buy a PC, especially a $1,500 one, you want it to last, I, I would say four years, uh, if not five years. Four years, I say that because like, you know, it's it's a college, you know, four years. And so, so like, let's say you're sending a kid off to college. That's actually a great example. You... You know, you're, you're, this kid's going to school for whatever, and basically he's planning on just typing. And then all of a sudden, there's an elective in graphic design. And suddenly, this the Y-series <laughs> processor just chokes, and it just doesn't get the job done, you know? Um, a U-series processor doesn't choke like that. I can't speak for this one yet because it's 10 nanometer and it's it's a completely new architecture, which is just wild because we haven't seen one from Intel in so long. Um, my point is, though, is that if you spend a lot of money on a PC, it, it should kind of be able to um, handle the unknown. You know, the, we, we can't predict the future. We don't know what we're going to... We know we're going to use the, the our PCs for tomorrow and a week from now and a month from now, but a year from now, you know, Life could be in a, two years from now, three years from now. Life could be in a completely different place. You don't know. You might have to do some of that extra stuff. So the fact that that Dell is putting a U series processor in this is a, it's a 15 watt quad core 10 nanometer processor with Iris Plus graphics. There's a lot more power here, uh, a lot more power than previous generations of the XPS 13 two and one. And I always took issue with that before because um, other companies are using U series processors in in convertibles and Dell wasn't you know it's, it's that simple so 
you know, I'm, I'm glad to see it sitting in with the rest of the XPS lineup with um, among the best out there that you can buy. And the XPS 13 clamshell is among the best. The XPS 15, that's that, that prosumer type of thing. It's got a 45 watt uh, processor up to an octa-core Core i9, dedicated graphics, a 1650. It's, it's powerful. You know, I just recently reviewed that. It's got a 4K OLED display. Awesome. You know, um, the XPS 15 2 in 1 will probably never get refreshed, although I really liked it when it was out, other than that that little issue I had with the keyboard. Um, that was with the KB Lake G processor, which I don't even think Intel's going to refresh, so that's probably just never going to happen. But um, I thought it was awesome. So, yeah, XPS lineup is awesome. And the, the only one that I ever would have said don't buy that was the XPS 13 2 in 1. So, um, yeah, I'm kind of pumped that um, getting... It's here. You know, <laughs> Ice Lake is here. 10th Gen is here. And it's a big deal. Like I said, it's a big deal because it's a big architectural change. Even um, 8th Generation KB Lake, it was fundamentally the same architecture as 6th Generation Skylake. And I'm not just talking about how many nanometers it was. Like, like it was the same with some tweaks. <laughs> you know, so, so, you know, this is a big difference. It's a big change. Uh, so hopefully that means better battery life, should be more graphics power. And, um, Another thing I love about XPS is uh, something called Dell Cinema. Dell has a thing. It's called Dell Cinema. There's Cinema Color, Cinema Sound, and Cinema Stream. Cinema Color is like HDR standards. It's basically a pretty display for those that don't look any deeper into it than that. This is that, like I said, it's a full HD plus one. It's not the UHD one, which you know, I, I always want that extra, those extra pixels, but you know, it's, it's, you sacrifice battery life with that anyway. Um, cinema Sound. Um, by the way, I have it right in front of me. Cinema Color is Dell Color Profiles and Dolby Vision. Cinema Sound is Waves or Max Audio Pro. And then you have Cinema Stream, which uses Killer Wireless to um, prioritize streams. Which, it, you know, it's it's been done for gaming laptops before, where you can prior, prioritize network traffic to go for the game you're playing. Um, so Dell said, hey, why can't we do that for a streaming video as well? It's pretty awesome. I mean, that, like these are great all-around laptops because... Um, Dell focuses a lot on media consumption, assuming that, rightfully assuming that that's probably something you're going to do with it. And at the same time, focusing on, um, productivity, you know, like the keyboard on this is so much better than on the XPS 15 2 in one with that original maglev. So yeah, I'm pretty pumped about it. I'm going to have a review on this in a few weeks and, um, there are a few things that I want to dive a little deeper into. So stay tuned for that. I'm Richard Neowin. Have a great night.